What's up everyone, it's James Hugh Quick, and today I wanna to talk about something that's pretty important, and it's how to deal with and prevent burnout in your career. Now, the cool thing about this video is it's not just for developers, this really can apply to anyone, regardless of your career. So I'm gonna walk you through some of the things that I do throughout the day to try to break it up a little bit so that I don't get burned out myself. So first off, if you're new to the channel and you enjoy the video, make sure to like it, subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell so that you can get notifications when new videos come out. And I wanna start with uh, just referencing a conversation that I had on Twitch last week with Justin Chow and he run or has a Chow Codes Instagram, runs his own YouTube channel. He actually did a video on burnout that I will uh, add a graphic up here for you to see as well. Definitely go and check out his stuff, but had a lot of good conversation with him about burnout and that's what really kind of triggered me to do this video. All right, so I'm gonna give you a couple of just high level pieces of advice and then I'm gonna walk you through some of the things that I do in my day to help break it up and make it a little bit more exciting for me. So I think one, like you need to feel very comfortable just taking time for yourself and paying attention to how you feel when you do things. If you feel like you need a break, take a break. You don't need to work eight hours straight every day. I never work eight hours straight every day. You'll see some of the things that I do to break it up, but I have to get out of my desk. I have a standing desk, so I'm up or an adjustable desk. So I'm up and down all day long. I'm moving, I'm doing things. I'm going and um, making breakfast or lunch. I take breaks. I watch a TV show during the middle of the day. I take a nap if I need to. Some people don't have that flexibility. A lot of us are working from home now. So I think you have more control over how you work. But something like taking a nap in the afternoon, if, I, if I'm like dead tired in the afternoon, I'm not gonna be very productive, right? I could take a 30 minute nap and come back 45 minutes later and be much more productive over that span than I would have been had I just continued to work. So I pay attention, I'm very active in like taking care of myself, taking breaks, getting out and doing the things that you'll see in a second. And I think you need to feel comfortable doing that too. Now, not everybody has like carte blanche to do whatever they want, but maybe if, you, if you're going to an office, maybe you can get out and just take a 15 minute walk, whatever it is to just get out of your desk and kind of break it up a little bit. Another thing that someone mentioned in our stream the other day is they feel like they have to be going all the time. If, they're, if you're trying to get into a career in, in programming, you feel like you have to be learning all the time. And I think there is a lot of responsibility. If you're trying to transition careers, there's a lot you have to do, a lot you have to learn but it's not a constant thing. It's super important to have time with your family. It's super important to take care of yourself physically, get out and exercise, even if, like I said, it's just taking a walk. Those things just help your mental space so much. They help me so much um, that I think I think the main thing is for you to just feel like you, you have the ability to take control of your health and your day and kind of make yourself the most productive you can in a way that's healthy for you. So here's a few of the things that I've been doing recently to help me avoid burnout as well. So one of the things that uh, helps me with burnout that I've been focusing on recently is I'm still doing a lot of content creation. You can see like video editing and stuff back there, but I'm not just doing my regular screencast. Like usually I just record my screen and maybe my video and then I show you how to do something in a code. Now I'm getting a lot more creative. I'm doing more of these vloggy type videos where I'm getting to learn more about cameras and like portable lights and uh, and sound and microphones. And like, these are just different things than my setup over here. I've got a whole setup, everything's pretty good, but now I'm like experimenting with like getting out and just doing different takes and splicing stuff together and just getting a lot more creative. And honestly, that learning process has just been a lot of fun. Like it's kind of cool to push myself in different directions. It gives me another exciting thing uh, to be learning as I'm working on creating content for you. So that's something that like it's kind of just a twist on something I was already doing to make it a little bit more exciting and give me another reason to be more interested in it. So if you've watched any of my videos, you've probably noticed like in the background and almost everyone, there's always a dog on the couch. So this is one of the things that actually like really helps me, like especially working from home, like potentially getting lonely or bored. Like I just love having my dogs around. It's really nice to have them on the couch to go and like hang out with them, maybe go for a walk. Um, so anyway, yeah, I like love having them around. That kind of helps me. Uh, if I need some energy, I can go play with them and get a little bit of excitement during the day. So when I talk about getting away from the desk, getting outside, maybe going for a walk or something, that's one of the things that I have specifically been trying to do a lot more with my dogs 
it's hot as hell outside honestly so we all like we make like one lap around the block and it takes maybe 15 minutes but it's great for the dogs to get out and go for a walk and then it's great for me again just to like distance myself to take a break to get out to do something the least bit physical um, anyway so that's something that i've been spending a lot of time like paying attention to recently and i think that's been good just an easy way to get out and break up the day So a lot of times when I am getting tired or I'm just kind of out of it in the afternoon, especially I like to take a break, go outside and play basketball for a little bit. That's one of my like biggest things that I do is just go uh, outside. I've got a, a goal I'll show you in a second in my driveway. Just go and get some shots up and get away from the desk for a little bit. So let's go ahead and head out there. All right, so sometimes that like 15 minute, I'm just gonna go shoot around for a few minutes. Turns into a full-fledged workout. I got my shirt off, I'm sweating, putting the ball up. But that's just what I needed today. Like I've been sitting at my desk for, I don't know how long, like hours. I took a walk earlier with Lily, but I got out, took a couple shots and I was like, I need to actually like work out. So I just like full on started working out, playing ball, but that's what I needed today. That's just how it is. That's how. It's different every day, right? But just like listening to your body, getting out and doing whatever it is you need to. All right, so another thing that uh, we love to do, you can see how excited Jess is, is we have been running recently. She's actually been running a lot more than I have for longer than I have, because I have just gotten back into it the last like couple of weeks. But go for runs in the afternoon of the morning to get out and be active and get exercise. And it's good for our minds and our bodies and it makes us feel great, and it's almost like it's not even a million degrees outside. I don't wanna. Well, neither one of us do, but it's good for us, right? Ready to run? No. Ready to run? Ready to run? <laughs> Ready to run? Nope. A Chevy. <laughs> that tickles. These are my girls. <laughs> They're not weird at all. <laughs> all right, how was the run? Wasn't so bad. Wasn't so bad. That was literally the worst thing I've ever done. Whatever. Do you feel better? Do I feel better? All right, so the day before I was getting ready to publish this video, uh, which was actually yesterday by the time of recording this, I found out that um, one of my aunt's husbands passed away. And it's not someone that I was uh, very close with because they got married kind of later in life, um, but it's still a death in the family. And I wanted to kind of throw that on this video because I think it's important to show like the idea of dealing with burnout is is how you struggle with what you do for work in combination with all the other things that we have going on in life and i think everybody has their own thing right it may be a death in the family it may be somebody that's sick that needs extra help it may be any number of a million different things and that makes it so much harder to deal with your work life or your aspirations of changing careers or whatever it is when you have other things going on and that's just tough and it's something that we can't avoid some Stretches are better than others. Some days, some months, some years are easier, better, less distracting, whatever you want to call it. But at the end of the day, we all have stuff uh, going on all the time, really. So I recognize that I am in a very fortunate position of being able to just kind of drop everything work-wise. And I, I messaged my manager yesterday, told him what was going on, said, I'll be in and out. I'll try to take care of the things that I can, but I've got to go and like help 
be with family and do logistics and that sort of stuff. And, um, and I'm privileged to be in a position where I can do that. And not everyone can. And I think it's important to try to take the time for yourself, whether it's like playing basketball or going for a walk or whatever we talked about earlier. But just take time to be, be with yourself, to be with your family, to take care of yourself, to help take care of your family because you won't get that time back. And uh, that always, if you're, if you're trying to do stuff work-wise or learning-wise and you're distracted, it's going to show and it's going to affect, um, it's going to affect the way you do things. So uh, anyway, just wanted to share that with you since it just happened and was kind of relevant to this video. And I am definitely going to take some personal time uh, to be with family and to kind of reflect and, and help out and support where I can. And um, hopefully um, things will be relatively okay. And uh, yeah. All right. So what better way to uh, wrap up a discussion on burnout than uh, just kind of hanging out with the dog on the couch. So I hope this was helpful for you. And it like maybe wasn't like super insightful, but I did want to show like even as a person on YouTube, as a YouTuber, as a content creator, we all have personal lives, right? We do things. We have families. We have friends. We like activities. We have other interests. And I think it's important that that you know that I don't do video and um, programming all day long, every day. I have other stuff that, that um, I do and I need to do that. I need to take time for myself. I need to get away. I need to take breaks. And I think you should too. So that's kind of the lesson of the day is just make sure that you're paying attention to how you feel on a daily basis. If you need a break, go and take it um, and just kind of work towards that every day, I guess. So dealing with burnout, all in all, take some time for yourself. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any tips or thoughts um, on how you deal with burnout, leave those in the comments below. I'd love to, to hear your thoughts and uh, kind of spark a conversation around that. So anyway, thanks for uh, checking out the video and from Lily and I and the other doggies in the house, uh, we'll see you later.